Every single time you make a new script in Unity, it defaults it as a mono behavior and starts you with two functions, start and update. And if I put a debug log statement in update and we run the game, you'll see that in my console, it's actually logging every single frame the game is running and it's, it's doing it a lot. Well, what would happen if we actually made this a lowercase update? The function name hasn't changed, it's just is a lowercase u now. This time when we run the game, nothing's happening. There's no log statement, every frame, nothing is happening. Isn't that a little strange? Why is this happening? Well, it's because the names start, update, and a bunch of others are actually known in Unity as magic functions or lifecycle methods, or the Unity documentation itself refers to them as event functions. And so what happens is when your game is running, anything that has a mono behavior script attached is doing a hard keyword search for start, update, awake, on enable, and many others, and adding them to a list that all get executed in a certain order. Some of them happen on their own, like awake will get called first every time the game's loading. This is the first method in a script that gets called, but others such as on collision enter only happen when you have a collider and a rigid body and two colliders have intersected. So if those conditions aren't met, then this on collision enter method won't be added to the list that gets executed because it knows that it can't actually, you know, do anything. Unity actually has this chart in their documentation that goes through all the magic functions of the life cycle of a script and the ordering of how they are executed. So you'll see at the very top, we have awake, we have on enable, we have start, we have fixed update. This is a bunch of stuff with state machines. You'll see in almost all movement tutorials, fixed update is best to handle physics. So this is in a physics block. You'll see at the end, we have on trigger and on collision. So this is like on collision enter, which we were just talking about. It goes down into input events where we have our update function. We go into some coroutine stuff and there's a ton of other magic functions I'm sure you've never even heard of. Like when was the last time you modified something in on pre coal? You probably didn't know it existed till now. And so you can kind of go through this and see how everything works together. Okay, so I updated my script here with the most popular magic functions from the start of awake all the way down to on destroy. And it's just gonna be logging its own name. And so if I hit play, I can pause and we see that awake gets called once, on enable gets called, start gets called, fixed update, update and late update get called a bunch of times. You'll see updates 294, whereas fixed updates only 38. So that might surprise you if you don't know the difference between these. This is why we like to do physics in fixed update because it gets called at a consistent rate whereas updates purely just based on the frame rate of your computer and your hardware. And you can actually modify fixed update in your project settings and set the duration between each fixed update call. And then you'll notice late update, which doesn't get used very often, gets called at the end of update. You'll notice we haven't called on application quit, on disable or on destroy because we haven't actually you know, quit the game yet. But once we do, I could stop playing the game and you'll see that it actually called these three functions right here on application quit, disable, destroy. So it checks out everything being logged in our console lines up with the chart on the Unity documentation, you know, which is what you should expect. But now you've seen it for yourself. But this is just like a handful of them. Outside of like going to the Unity documentation and researching these on your own, how are you ever supposed to know when you're supposed to use them? Well, one way where you get a little bit of information is if you hover over them with your mouse, you'll see like awake is called when the instance of the script's being loaded. Whereas on application quit, let's say, is sent to all game objects before the application is quit. So it's not really detailed in what it's telling you, but it kind of gives you like an idea. And so I'll go through a couple of them really quick. Awake, like it says, is called when the game is loading or when the script is loading, which is why if you have a variable that's like a rigid body and you didn't want to have to drag it into the inspector, right? This is where you would do something like RB equals get component of type rigid body because get component is somewhat of a costly call and you'd rather store this variable here for get component in awake where the game's loading rather than start when everything's already running. You can do it in start, but it's better to have your components configured as you load, right? That just seems less error prone. On enable is whenever your component gets enabled. That could be when the game object gets created. That could be when the game object, you know, re-enables itself or when the component re-enables itself. And on enable is really good for subscribing to events. If you watch any of my most recent tutorials, you see I use events a lot and you always subscribe in here. 
So I can just run my game again and I can disable and enable my component a bunch of times. And you'll see in the console, it gets called every time I basically uncheck and check the component, right? Makes sense. So if on enable is where you want to subscribe to events, going down to on disable is where you want to unsubscribe to events so that you clean up all of your listeners and you don't just have some floating memory out there lead to some weird errors. So after you load your script and it's enabled and this gets called, start is basically the first frame of update. So this might be a good place to, you know, use the components you have and like set some values. Like maybe you're storing actually a health component from another script and in start, you're just resetting your health back to max health because that's a good place to do it. Now that you have everything kind of loaded and initialized, this should prevent race conditions. So if you're loading things in a way correctly, you can then use them in start. Again, fixed updates good for anything physics related that you want in an update loop, like moving with a rigid body, setting velocity, things like that. That goes in fixed update. Update is things you want to happen every single frame, regardless of your frame rate. So things like detecting input or setting animation state or doing any non-physics calculations. That's the primary thing. Late update sounds like what its name says. It gets called after update. And I'm trying to think back to like where I really have used this. The only thing I can really think of is when you have like a camera following a game object and you need that game object to update first, like with movement, and then your camera can just follow afterwards. But I don't you really use it too much. On application quit happens when you like stop running the game in the editor, right? So if I just like stop playing, it says on application quit. Or if you are running the game outside of like the editor, like you built and you're running the game on its own, if you just like quit the game or shut down the game, this gets called. On disable we cover, it's when the component gets disabled, which happens also like when the game object's destroyed or when you like manually disable the component or the game object, this gets called. Again, that's good for unsubscribing from events. And then on destroy happens when you destroy the game object as it's aptly named, right? And so these three are really used just for any cleanup you really have to do. And that's really it. The main takeaway here is that there is a bunch of functions that are Unity specific that have a certain name and a certain capitalization you have to follow. It doesn't matter if it's public or private. It will scour every single mod of behavior looking for these keywords with the same capitalization and spelling. It'll add them to the list where it's applicable and then it will execute them in the order found in this chart. That is the main takeaway. There's a lot of use cases for some of the more popular ones, obviously, because that's why they're popular. And there's some pretty niche ones. I've been doing this a long time and I still haven't used many of these. So I wouldn't stress about it too much, but it is good to know that like these exist in the first place. You don't need to memorize them. You can just reference this chart. And if I had to think about it and choose one, I'd say my favorite magic function is probably unsubscribe, where when this gets called, it makes you subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.